So my name is Monique. I'm a nurse practitioner with the Rusk Institute of Rehab Medicine at NYU. Um, I specialize in oncology rehabilitation. So I primarily treat the functional sequelae of different issues that arise as a result of oncology diagnoses and subsequent treatment. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about managing chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy, also known as CIPN, in cancer survivorship. It's really important to emphasize that the approach to management and care is really dependent on a lot of factors, but one of the most important being the patient's own goals and their priorities in their cancer treatment and what their goals of care really are. There's definitely a balancing act between symptom control and continuing cancer treatment. I think the most important thing when it comes to managing CIPN is the relief of symptoms, preventing injury, improving quality of life, and really just optimizing function. So what exactly is chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy, or CIPN? Now, this is something we see happen in our patients that have different types of chemotherapies as treatment for their cancer or even other diagnoses, and it impacts and kind of has a toxic effect on the nerves that are in the hands, feet, arms and legs, and sometimes even the face and head. These drugs unfortunately damage the nerves farthest away from the body, which is why we see the hands and feet being affected very commonly. And it kind of affects their ability to do what they usually do, and that's transmit signals over to those muscles. And this is when we start to see symptoms, changes in sensation, pain, and weakness being some of the most common ones. So how did we get here? When does chemoneuropathy happen? It usually starts during or shortly after the initiation or even after finishing all the cycles of chemotherapy treatment. How long does it last? What's, what's the timeline? I think is a common question that I get from patients a lot. Some patients notice their numbness and tingling and burning sensation and these different symptoms starting to improve after their chemotherapy is finished. Some patients even notice it between cycles, but some patients do have persistent symptoms well after chemo into survivorship. Are there any risk factors? Yes. So there are a few different factors that can increase your risk of developing chemoneuropathy. And this really can include the type and dose of chemotherapy drugs, how long you're on treatment, and also, you know, how your health and any other existing issues. For example, patients with diabetes might be a little bit more prone to symptoms of neuropathy, but I'll get to that in just a bit. Um, there really isn't a clear rhyme or rhythm, and I wish I could tell you there was. I've seen patients who can receive the same diagnosis, they'll have the same treatment for the same duration, and Sometimes they'll have varying symptoms. One patient will have just a little bit of tingling or numbness, and one patient will have some significant weakness and changes in their walking and ability to even use their hands. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of chemoneuropathy? These can really vary in severity and can include numbness or tingling being the most common ones a shooting or burning pain, cold or heat sensitivity, or a sensation of always having cold hands or cold feet. Sometimes we'll see muscle weakness, a loss of balance and coordination because those nerves in the feet and in the legs can sometimes be impacted and that can really affect how you walk. And, you know, most severely is there's an increased risk of falling and having an injury because of the neuropathy symptoms. So what do patients say? What are some of the different, you know, ways that we see chemo neuropathy present? Some patients say they're always feeling cold. A lot of patients say they're dropping things all the time if their hands and their fingers are affected. 
maybe they're at work or maybe they're at home and they find that they're dropping their phone a lot or even things like a fork or a spoon. I'm having trouble typing is another common one, especially given how prevalent computers are in our lives. A lot of times patients notice some difficulty hitting the keys that they didn't necessarily have before. Feeling unsteady, off balance. Another common one is a cramping sensation in the hands, the feet, the legs, the arms, a burning sensation. Some patients say they feel electric shocks. Some patients, a common one I see is patients saying that it feels like they're stepping into space because they can't quite feel total sensation in their feet and they can't quite feel where their foot is when they're taking a step. And then another common one is bugs crawling. So during chemo, how do we manage this type of neuropathy? Regular monitoring, and chances are, if you've undergone chemotherapy or undergoing chemotherapy, a lot of these symptoms and signs that kind of indicate that chemo neuropathy is something that you're being asked almost at every visit or every infusion, whether it be by your provider, the nurse, it's so important that regular monitoring is occurring throughout chemo because early identification means that we can intervene early and hopefully prevent it from getting worse. Sometimes we do see adjustments in the chemo regimen. And again, it kind of comes back to goals of care and what the patient's goals of their treatment and journey is. Sometimes if the neuropathy is really severe, we do see that the dose of the chemo drug that's likely causing it, sometimes will have to be adjusted or reduced or even switched to a different treatment if it's, if it's appropriate. It's always important, you know, talk with your doctor, your provider, your nurse practitioner, PA, first to see if this is an option. And it's usually something that we're approaching kind of as a last resort. And also how will it impact the treatment of your cancer? So it's so important, you know, before those changes are happening to really have that conversation with your team. Lastly, sometimes we'll see with certain chemotherapies, cryotherapy or cooling therapy. Sometimes people will apply ice or ice packs to their hands, their feet, their scalp. We see this a lot with taxane chemotherapies. It's always important when it comes to this though, speak with your doctor before you try it some chemotherapy regimens this is contraindicated so always you know speak with your team and see what they say if you're having any symptoms so how do you get diagnosed with cipn it's based on a few different factors but most often it's based on your exam your presentation your symptoms and sometimes we will do tests like an electromyography or a nerve study, also known as an EMG. And what does this EMG do? And do you need an EMG to necessarily be diagnosed with chemoneuropathy? Not always. So sometimes it can be very helpful to have this particular test done with a neurologist or a rehab doctor because it can help distinguish between other neuropathies if there's suspicion maybe your symptoms aren't just from chemotherapy. If you know, for example, you have a history of uncontrolled diabetes or even a herniation in the back or the neck that's causing a nerve compression or a pinched nerve. You know, these symptoms can occur from multiple different conditions and even things like vitamin deficiencies. Certain, you know, a lack of certain B vitamins can cause symptoms that are very similar to chemo neuropathy. And it's important you're working with your team to really make sure that it's definitely chemoneuropathy or it's likely chemoneuropathy rather than something else that's going on and might be treated a little differently. Sometimes we do see that chemoneuropathy and other nerve compressions or other types of neuropathies like diabetes or carpal tunnel syndrome, like the median neuropathy, sometimes chemo can make the symptoms more severe and more noticeable. So how do we manage these symptoms? We've talked about the symptoms, we've gone through what causes them, but how do we manage it? How do we keep it from getting worse? How do we optimize and how do we just get to feeling better? 
And that's through a couple different things. Most importantly, you know, physical occupational therapy, you know, physical therapy can really help with your walking, your mobility, your balance. Sometimes there's certain exercises or stretches or things you can even do at home to really help rebuild the strength that might've been lost because of the neuropathy. There's also occupational therapy. Occupational therapy, you know, is definitely an underutilized intervention when it comes to neuropathy symptoms. You know, occupational therapists really focus on your daily activities and how you just kind of exist as a person in the community. And they can help with teaching you strategies and giving you different activities and exercises that can really minimize the impact that neuropathy has on your day to day. There's things like assistive devices. Sometimes patients will use different shoe inserts. Some patients will use a cane as needed or even a walker to improve mobility and reduce the risk of falls. And a lot of patients, you know, don't want to go this route. They, some patients, almost feel ashamed, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. If anything, it's really helping you to stay as independent as possible and in the community and preventing any issues. Some patients going through chemo or immediately after chemo when, you know, symptoms are really prominent will use a cane as needed, or if they're going long distances, traveling to and from appointments, using a walker just so they're a little bit safer. There's also um, something called TENS or transcutaneous um, electrical nerve stimulation. And this, you know, again, please always speak with your healthcare provider first. This is a low level of electrical stimulation. And if you've done physical therapy before, chances are you might've had this done to you. And this can be done at home and it can help alleviate some of the pain almost by distracting your brain to focus on that low level of electricity rather than the pain itself. But again, always ask your healthcare provider because it is contraindicated in some patients, meaning it's not something everybody can do. So medications, prescription medications. Interestingly enough, the first line in treating chemoneuropathy is two different types of antidepressants, and that's duloxetine or fenlafaxine. And these can work and reduce pain symptoms by kind of changing how your brain perceives pain and decreasing it. There's anticonvulsants, which is a really common one. Um, many patients might have heard of gabapentin or pregabalin. These are different types of nerve pain medications and you know, even another type of antidepressants like am amitriptyline sometimes can really help with reducing the pain. Anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or even steroids, opioids, they have limited evidence showing that it's necessarily effective in treating pain caused by chemoneuropathy. So that's something important to keep in mind if you're taking any over-the-counters or, you know, discussing treatment with your team. One thing that I always recommend for my patients who have chemoneuropathy is different topicals. And most of them you can get from the pharmacy, CVS, all the different pharmacies, you know, the mom and pop pharmacy down the block. Most of them have these different topical medications that some patients find more effective and more helpful with their pain or their symptoms than pills or other types of interventions. You know, one thing, patients always say to me is that they have great relief with Vicks Vapor Rub. Um, that menthol kind of counteracts that burning sensation. Um, anything that has, you know, capsaicin in it, like Bengay or Tiger Bomb or any of those you can get in the pharmacy, I always say use a little bit of caution because while it can help with inflammation, it can help with pain, sometimes it can make that burning sensation a little bit worse. Lidocaine, which can be numbing, which is something just to be cautious with, especially if you have neuropathy symptoms where you can't feel as well. And some people will use different compounded agents, which are just a combination of different medications in like a cream form. Again, not totally effective, but some patients will use that and go that route if they've tried other things that haven't worked. 
So lifestyle modifications, what should you do if you have chemo neuropathy? What can you do to prevent injury or hurting yourself and maybe not realizing it? Especially with the feet, but this can go for the hands too, is, you know, always make sure that you're inspecting for any injuries or cuts or anything like that, that might have happened during the day that you didn't quite realize because your sensation isn't all there because of the chemo neuropathy. Maintaining good hygiene, keeping everything clean, dry, wearing well-fitted shoes, um, you know, trying to avoid going barefoot is another one, especially, you know, if you're in the house or even going anywhere, trying to minimize that or avoid it altogether. Because again, you're a little bit more prone to injury when it comes to chemo neuropathy, especially in the feet, because you can step on something and you might not feel it. You might not get that sensation of, oh, I just stepped on something or I stubbed my toe. And some patients do see this happen. We also recommend seeing a foot doctor or a podiatrist for nail trimming and management of injuries or anything like that if the sensation impacts your ability to feel if you've been hurt. Safety measures, of course, minimizing your risk for falls at home, removing clutter, or anything that you can step on or trip on that can cause a fall. Using handrails if you have them in the home, um, and you know, wearing those non-slip socks and shoes, like the hospital socks, um, just try not to go barefoot because again, you're a little bit more prone to injury. What else can you do? Um, there are a lot of complementary therapies in addressing chemoneuropathy. One of those being acupuncture. There are studies that show it's effective, not necessarily for reducing pain, but for managing that numb and that decreased sensation. Um, there is a community webinar, which I think Katie can drop the link in the um, chat box or send it out to everyone. There is um, Dr. Zhu who oversees our oncology rehab program at NYU. She's gonna be doing a webinar on December 7th on acupuncture. So I definitely recommend, you know, if this is something that interests you and something that you would potentially wanna to try to help manage chemo neuropathy, definitely something to attend. Um, some patients will do massage like deep tissue massage or even relaxation techniques or stretching like yoga or meditation to really help address the symptoms. And it's also important, consult your team, speak with your oncology dietitian or nutritionist, your medical oncologist, but there are some specific dietary supplements such as alpha lipoic acid that can help alleviate chemo neuropathy symptoms. Alpha lipoic acid is something that is found in the diet. I believe it's found in legumes and different dark leafy greens. Um, but it's also something that can be taken in supplement form. And some patients who don't necessarily want to take another medication will go this route. Again, just make sure you speak with your team first to make sure you don't have any crazy interactions and it's not something that they want you to avoid, depending on where you are in your survivorship journey. So some final notes, I think the most important thing is just communicate with your team, communicate with your healthcare team, your oncology team about how you're feeling. You know, just because chemo neuropathy is common does not mean it's normal and it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. If you're having symptoms, if you know, you're on one end of the spectrum where you have decreased sensation, trouble with balance, dropping things, or the other end of the spectrum where we see burning, discomfort, you know, this debilitating type of pain, share it with your team. Make sure to speak with them because you don't have to suffer through it. And there are definitely options for managing it. And it's important to note that the severity and the progression of chemo neuropathy can really vary widely among different patients. And, you know, individualized care and management of neuropathy. Every patient's care plan and a, approach to treating their neuropathy is going to be different. You know, what works for you might not necessarily work for something, someone else. So it's important, stay in close contact with your team, 
let them know if you're experiencing any of these symptoms at any point, and they can discuss with you your options and resources available to you to really help address it and prevent it from getting in the way of your journey into survivorship. So sometimes we do, again, kind of coming back to that timeline, CIPN can persist long after chemo is ended. And sometimes that does require a different approach and different adaptations to really managing survivorship and trying to get you in a position where you can best thrive. Some references here and Thank you. I did put the um, info down for our outpatient clinic on the next slide. Um, if interested in oncology rehabilitation, put the number on there and our address if you wanted to schedule with our oncology rehab physician or myself for further evaluation and management. So there are some mixed studies showing it can improve symptoms um, in small groups of patients. Again, I always say speak to your team and your doctor, but I do have a few patients that will take it on a daily basis that find it to be really effective in reducing the severity of some of the numbness and that burning pain. So some drugs are a little bit more prone to causing it. Um, Taxol being one of them, um, a lot of the platinum-based chemotherapies are pretty susceptible to patients developing chemoneuropathy. So carboplatin, cisplatin, oxaloplatin, those different medications can definitely, you know, we see a lot of chemoneuropathy symptoms related to those. So for some patients, yes, some patients, they'll come back to me months and months later saying they feel fine. Some patients find that it does resolve after they finish going through chemo. Um, some patients do have some nagging symptoms. Sometimes, you know, I always tell patients it can, we're gonna see the most improvement and progress in that first year after finishing chemotherapy in terms of symptoms. And we'll have a better idea because the nerves do take a while to heal. And sometimes it can take that six months to a year for symptoms to really start getting better. Some patients find well into survivorship, the symptoms persist, or maybe are a little minor, a little tingling here and there that never quite went away. It's definitely different patient to patient. So I always say, you know, speak with your provider. Um, some patients do complain that the neuropathy symptoms are a lot worse at night, especially if you're super active during the day. Um, there are different medications to try um, that can potentially help with reducing how severe the symptoms are overnight or even just with helping with sleep. Um, really just kind of Aries, I would speak to your doctor and see what they recommend because they probably have a few different tools in their toolbox that they can recommend for that type, those types of symptoms. This webinar is a great reminder that as a part of our survivorship support services, Perlmutter Cancer Center patients can meet with rest rehabilitation specialists like Monique for a myriad of cancer related rehabilitative needs. And the number for Long Island is on here as well. Uh, we also want to thank all of our guests for joining and engaging with us tonight. This webinar, like all of our webinars, will be uploaded to NYU Langone's YouTube page under Perlmutter Cancer Center. And lastly, keep an eye out for more community and survivorship webinars. Stay up to date on the latest news and events from Perlmutter Cancer Center by following our Facebook page, subscribing to our community newsletter, and watching our previous webinars on YouTube. Thank you everyone again, and we hope you have a fabulous night.